I've known Harris for nearly 50 years and became friends with him um, at a time that I can't remember. It's been so long ago. If, if I could have ever had a brother, I would have wanted him to be like Harris. I just loved Harris because he saw me. And, uh, you know, not a lot of people do. Not a lot of people see people. And he sees, he sees everyone. And he, he leans towards the good. You know, when you had his undivided attention, it was, there was nobody else around. I mean, he had that ability to um, be curious and listen. You know, he always believed I could do and be whatever I wanted. You know, and that, I have a lot of friends who didn't have dads like that. Harris became my godfather about when I was about 10 years old, I think in the early 70s. And uh, in, the, in the mid to late 70s, he became sort of a surrogate father for me, and, uh, close friends. And like any good father, he's somebody I could always uh, get with, spend time with, uh, ask questions of. Dad was very big on family. He was always at my activities. He was involved. He was engaged. He was 100% present. Um, and those are, those are memories that you you don't, you don't forget, and um, yeah. Things that were very, very important to him were, you know, he loved his church, he loved his wife, he loved his kids, and he loved his grandkids. He was also big in Kiwanis Club, was a very involved nationally with that as well. I think those were extensions of service for him and something that he found again just very was very passionate about that that extended his faith in his ability to help others no question that love his life was my mom and that everything that he did was for mom uh, with mom uh, i never had a question as a child their marriage and their love for each other they were a great balance to each other my mother has and still is the really the, the glue uh, to our family. As somebody now that's been married, uh, it's a hard example to follow, something that seemed to be so perfect. Mr. Davis always had a zest for life, and um, he um, always was interested in you more than he was him. He was a lifelong learner, and he, never wanted to stop learning. He was very curious and I think that curiosity um, really, uh, he expected that of others. In his next life, uh, he would have either been a, a teacher uh, or a preacher. He uh, always was an unbelievable public speaker. What I think all the kids have really got more than anything is just that ability to connect, not instantly, but pretty close to instantly with someone. We did a lot of traveling together. Over 20 countries from Africa to China to Russia, Eastern and Western Europe, um, Scandinavia. Through the years, I became more and more appreciative of his wisdom and his philosophy. Dad was very involved in community activities and felt very at ease in doing those activities. I never once thought being with him at an event uh, that he was out of his element. Uh, I think people look to him for leadership. I think he gave leadership in a lot of the uh, organizations he was involved with. He believed in making the world a better place and that include no better than your family and your, the people that you work with. His approach to work was 110 percent every day and, um, and, and again that uh, often meant more than five days a week. Whatever he was involved in, he was vested in. He was, he was in it, and he gave everything that he had. So his passion for affordable housing was, was really based, I think, on his faith, and also, I think, for eight, just the lack of housing for seniors, and especially for chronically mentally ill and elderly. I think he believed in making the world better, and I don't think a career that didn't impact his community would have been satisfying to him. Harris was always very, very patient with 
everyone he worked with. Uh, he was also very meticulous. Uh, so sometimes we had to be a little patient with him because he basically wanted to see things a certain way. Uh, he didn't want to manage any uh, housing that he wouldn't be proud to have his mother live in. For him, it was always personal. It was always about inspect what you expect, which was a kind of management um, <laughs> philosophy of his that anytime he uh, taught or anytime he was managing um, and setting a culture in the organization, that was um, very much a part of who he was. He was just a teacher, just a leader. He, would, he, he didn't ask you to do anything that he wouldn't do himself. Whether that's taking out the trash, breaking down cardboard, changing a filter, or you know, doing what your actual job is. There's really not a difference in how he approached it. It's I, the job has to get done. So what can we do to get it done with integrity, honesty, and customer service? For those that were, that got him uh, and understood his, uh, how he thought, what made him tick. Um, I just, I don't think you could have asked for a better person to work for or with uh, and to learn from.